Battle of Quebec, 1759, the turning point of the Seven Years' War. Welcome to Past History Unveiled. In today's episode, we journey back to the fateful year of 1759 during the throes of the Seven Years' War. The Battle of Quebec, also known as the Battle of the Plains of Abraham, stands as a pivotal moment in the struggle for control over North America between the British and French empires. This clash of titans not only shaped the future of Canada, but also had far-reaching implications for the global balance of power. By 1759, the Seven Years' War had been raging across continents, with North America being a significant theater of conflict. The French, led by the capable Marquis de Montcalm, had fortified Quebec, the heart of New France. This strategic stronghold, perched high on cliffs overlooking the St. Lawrence River, seemed impregnable. Louis Joseph de Montcalm Gozin, Marquis de Montcalm, was born on February 28, 1712, in the Chateau de Candiac near Nîmes, France. He was the eldest of eleven children born to Louis Daniel de Montcalm and Marie-Thérèse de Lorris. Montcalm came from a noble family with a long history of military service. He received a thorough education, focusing on military strategy and classical studies, which set the foundation for his future military career. Montcalm began his military career at the age of 15, joining the French army as an ensign in the regiment of Hainaut. He quickly rose through the ranks due to his bravery and tactical acumen. Some key battles and experiences that shaped his career include War of Austrian Succession, 1740-1748 Montcalm distinguished himself in several engagements during this conflict, particularly at the Battle of Piacenza in 1746, where he was wounded but continued to lead his troops with distinction. Siege of Maastricht, 1748 His leadership during this siege earned him a promotion to brigadier. Montcalm's experiences in these European conflicts honed his skills in siege warfare and defensive strategies, which would be crucial in his later defense of Quebec. In 1756, amid the escalating tensions of the Seven Years' War, Montcalm was appointed commander of French forces in North America, tasked with defending New France against the British. Upon his arrival, Montcalm quickly realized the importance of Quebec as the linchpin of French defense in North America. The city's strategic location, perched high on cliffs overlooking the St. Lawrence River, made it a natural fortress. The cliffs provided a natural barrier, but Montcalm ordered the construction of additional fortifications, including walls, redoubts, and artillery placements to repel any naval attacks from the British. Drawing from his European experiences, Montcalm enhanced Quebec's defenses to withstand prolonged sieges. This included stockpiling supplies and ensuring the fortifications could support sustained defensive efforts. Quebec controlled access to the St. Lawrence River, the main artery for supplies and reinforcements from France. Its loss would effectively cut off New France from vital resources. The city's position on high cliffs made it naturally defensible, but Montcalm's fortifications aimed to make it nearly impregnable against a determined siege. A fortified Quebec would boost French morale and deter British attacks, showcasing French resolve to maintain control over their North American territories. Montcalm led French forces in several key battles before the pivotal Battle of Quebec. Battle of Fort Oswego, 1756 Montcalm captured the British fort, securing Lake Ontario and disrupting British supply lines. Battle of Fort William Henry, 1757 His forces captured the fort, though the subsequent massacre of British prisoners by his Native American allies caused significant controversy. Battle of Carillon, 1758 Montcalm's most significant victory, where his smaller force defeated a much larger British army, bolstering French control over the region. Montcalm was married to Angelique Louise Talon de Boulay, with whom he had ten children. Despite his demanding military career, he maintained a close relationship with his family, frequently corresponding with them during his campaigns. Montcalm was known for his devout Catholic faith, which influenced his leadership style and his humane treatment of prisoners and civilians. On the British side, Major General James Wolfe was entrusted with the daunting task of capturing Quebec. James Wolfe was born on January 2, 1727, in Westerham, Kent, England, into a military family. His father, Lieutenant General Edward Wolfe was a distinguished army officer, which greatly influenced young James's path. Wolfe's mother, Henrietta, instilled in him a sense of duty and discipline that would shape his character. Wolfe joined the army at the tender age of 13, 
starting as a second lieutenant in his father's regiment. His early exposure to military life, coupled with his keen intellect and relentless drive, set the stage for a remarkable career. By age 16, Wolf had already seen action in the War of the Austrian Succession, participating in battles such as Dettingen in 1743 and Fontenoy in 1745, where he distinguished himself despite his youth. Wolf's rise through the ranks was swift and impressive. His performance at the Battle of Culloden in 1746, where he served as brigade major, earned him recognition. His actions during the Scottish Jacobite Rebellion demonstrated his tactical acumen and fearlessness. Wolfe's leadership and bravery caught the attention of his superiors, who saw great potential in the young officer. Wolfe's personal life was marked by dedication to his military career. Despite his successes, he was often plagued by poor health, which he stoically endured. Wolfe never married, and his life was characterized by a relentless pursuit of military excellence. In 1757, during the Seven Years' War, Wolfe was appointed as a lieutenant colonel and took part in the Rockefeller expedition. Although the mission was unsuccessful, Wolfe's conduct under fire earned him further acclaim. His reports on the operation showcased his strategic insight and his ability to lead men in challenging circumstances. The turning point in Wolfe's career came with the Siege of Louisbourg in 1758. Appointed as one of the brigadiers under Major General Geoffrey Amherst, Wolfe played a crucial role in capturing the French fortress on Cape Breton Island. His leadership during the siege was instrumental in the British victory, as he led several daring assaults against the French defenses. The fall of Louisbourg was a significant strategic victory for the British, providing them control over the Gulf of St. Lawrence and opening the pathway to Quebec. Wolfe's success at Louisbourg cemented his reputation as a brilliant and ruthless commander, earning him the trust and admiration of his peers and superiors. Following the victory at Louisbourg, British military leadership recognized the importance of capturing Quebec, the heart of French Canada. The task was daunting. Quebec was heavily fortified, perched atop cliffs overlooking the St. Lawrence River, and defended by the seasoned French commander, the Marquis de Montcalm. Given Wolfe's proven track record, he was chosen to lead the expedition against Quebec. In early 1759, Wolfe was promoted to Major General and tasked with one of the most challenging and high-stakes operations of the war. His appointment reflected the British High Command's confidence in his ability to deliver a decisive blow against the French. On the night of September 12, 1759, a pivotal moment in the Seven Years' War unfolded as British General James Wolfe orchestrated a daring and audacious maneuver to capture Quebec. With the cover of darkness and a heavy fog cloaking their movements, Wolfe's troops embarked on their perilous journey, determined to seize the heavily fortified city of Quebec, the heart of New France. General James Wolfe led his British forces in small boats down the St. Lawrence River. His trusted lieutenants, such as Colonel William Howe and Brigadier General Robert Monckton, played crucial roles in the execution of this bold plan. The British soldiers, seasoned and resolute, rode silently, the sound of oars dipping into the water muffled by the dense fog that shrouded their approach. As they reached the base of the cliffs, later known as Wolf's Cove, the challenge intensified. The climb up the steep, rocky terrain was arduous and dangerous. British soldiers, burdened with their heavy equipment, scrambled up the nearly vertical ascent. Leading the way, Lieutenant Colonel William Howe demonstrated extraordinary leadership, ensuring his men remained coordinated and silent. The troops, driven by Wolfe's unwavering resolve, encountered only minimal resistance from the French sentries, who were caught off guard by the audacity of the British maneuver. By dawn on September 13, Wolfe's army had miraculously assembled on the Plains of Abraham, a flat expanse just outside the city of Quebec. General Wolfe, standing alongside his officers, including Brigadier General George Townsend and Colonel James Murray, surveyed the scene. The element of surprise was complete. The French commander, the Marquis de Montcalm, awoke to the astonishing news that the British had positioned themselves on the Plains of Abraham. He hastily marshaled his forces, comprising approximately 4,500 men, to confront the invaders. Among his officers were the brave and determined Colonel Louis Antoine de Bougainville and the steadfast Lieutenant Colonel Jean-Baptiste Nicolas Roch de Ramazé. The two armies, each numbering around 4,500 men, faced off in a brutal and decisive confrontation. 
the British lines, disciplined and well-trained, stood ready as the French troops advanced. Wolfe, despite his deteriorating health, inspired his men with his presence on the battlefield. The opening volleys of musket fire rang out, echoing across the plains as both sides engaged in fierce combat. In the thick of the battle, General James Wolfe was struck by multiple musket balls. As he lay dying, he received the news that the French lines were breaking, a moment of bittersweet victory. Wolfe's final words, Now, God be praised, I will die in peace, marked the end of his remarkable life. On the French side, the Marquis de Montcalm was also grievously wounded. He was carried from the battlefield, and as he lay in his quarters, he learned of the French defeat. Montcalm, understanding the broader implications of this loss, expressed his sorrow, I am happy that I shall not live to see the surrender of Quebec. On September 18, 1759, the city surrendered to the British. The British victory at the Battle of Quebec was a turning point in the Seven Years' War, leading to the eventual British dominance in North America. The courage and strategic brilliance of Wolfe, coupled with the resolve of his officers and soldiers, had overcome tremendous odds. The Battle of Quebec demonstrated the critical importance of daring strategy and the element of surprise in military success. It also underscored the profound personal sacrifices made by leaders and soldiers alike. The deaths of Wolfe and Montcalm, both gallant and honorable men, highlighted the tragic cost of war. For more riveting historical narratives and detailed analyses of significant battles, follow our channel, Past History Unveiled. Subscribe and click the notification button to stay updated whenever we release new videos that bring history to life. Join us as we continue to explore the remarkable events that have shaped our world.